Hi, it's Michael. This subject is crucial to understand because the sex energy is such a primal and powerful energy and its distortion via false beliefs or suppression can lead, actually does lead, to serious troubles for the person. So first, three things need to be understood. One, the sex energy is the prime is the primal energy in this physical world, in this animal world, and it is extremely strong. And it has to be. Can you imagine what would happen if, uh, uh, for the survival of species, if uh, uh, animals, uh, including humans, uh, could uh, easily refuse sex and procreation? Uh, it could spell a problem. So. The sex energy is very powerful, very strong, and it's the primal life energy in this physical world. Number two, the a human being is the human body with its instinct and the ego are of this physical world, obviously, uh, and are of the animal kind. That's clear, yes? Yet the soul of the person, so to speak, is of the spiritual world, of the spiritual kingdom. And thus, as Dr. David Hawkins uh, indicated, a person, incarnated person, is kind of caught between the uh, spiritual kingdom and the animal kingdom and uh, so there is some kind of push-pull attractions uh, based on uh, based on these contrasts and number three every person every single person consists of a female energy and male energy. So every male, every man has a male and female energy inside and every woman has a female and male energy inside. And the balance of these energies determines uh, the person's attractions uh, and aversions in sex lives. Uh, so if the male has the uh, female energy dominating for whatever reason, the male will be attracted sexually more to other males because the female energy in the male is attracted more uh, to um, other males. On the other hand, if the female has the male energy uh, dominating for whatever reason the female is more sexually attracted towards other f females again male energy in the female more attraction towards um, other females so having established that the s sex energy is such a prime and powerful energy and is of the animal world in humans this a sex energy uh, can be said that it moves through the base chakras and in humans it can be uplifted uh, to the higher chakras to it can be uplifted to spiritual energy so from the primal sex energy it can be uh, transcended and uplifted to a higher spiritual energy and this is part of the spiritual evolvement here. 
and uh, the only this upliftment of the energy obviously can happen only naturally it cannot be forced and it happens uh, through uh, intention prayer understanding awareness and surrender and when it is uplifted this way naturally to the higher chakras to the higher spiritual energy then it uh, results or contributes to celibacy this is the only way how to naturally positively congruently harmoniously become celibate that's the only way through surrender prayer intention understanding and uh, awareness that is the only way how to become naturally and healthily celibate so is sex okay spiritually is uh, playing sexually with one's own body okay spiritually is celibacy important spiritually is gay sex or homosexual sex important uh, spiritually religions are very judgmental about all this and out of that come um, a lot of negative emotions and uh, a lot of bullshit a lot of crap uh, and it has done almost could be said unspeakable harm to people in this way because the sex energy as already mentioned is such a primal and strong energy when it is not respected uh, when it is not handled truthfully uh, then uh, it results in a lot of grief in a lot of problems and then it can affect the whole society everything it's not really what you do even though what you do comes out of how you are it's what your intention and what's the intention behind it is the true intention not the excuse but the true intention behind it so if whatever the sexual uh, sexual uh, activities may be if the true intention behind them is loving then it's okay then they are okay on top of that are you addicted to sex are you dependent on sex so addiction when uh, somebody mentions addiction what come what may come to the mind is a drunk that uh, uh, stumbles all around or some drug addict uh, there's just lying on the pavement uh, that's not necessarily just addiction addiction is if you cannot be without it if if you um, if you say that you need it you you uh, you have the need uh, to have sex uh, or uh, um, even if you don't do it physically if you uh, if you frequently think about it and so on that's all part of addiction so can you be without sex including thinking about sex peacefully and uh, happily without any regrets if so you are not addicted to it and that's great because all addictions regardless to what the addiction may be uh, are attachments and they are um, spiritually they are very detrimental to you let's make it absolutely clear that it is perfectly okay to engage sex and 
sexual activities when they are loving and positive they are perfectly normal part of human nature part of growing up part of evolving a part of this world there need to be no um, shame um, anger resentment all these negative emotions ignore them push them aside it is perfectly okay to engage in many kinds of sexual activities as long as they are loving and positive respectful eventually one transcends the attraction of sex naturally as one matures spiritually and uh, as already mentioned this happens via intention surrender prayer non-judgment of sex uh, awareness um, this uh, transcendence of uh, sex or the attraction of sex cannot happen by a sudden mental decision uh, to become celibate even as uh, Osho an enlightened uh, teacher uh, said that uh, these uh, priests and nuns who take uh, the vow of uh, of celibacy or who um, accept celibacy as part of the religious order and then they just force the sex energy to kind of uh, stop uh, or to suppress it uh, then they are they may look saintly on the outside but inside of them they are like boiling lava rivers of suppressed sexual energy and it can actually lead even to perversion as mentioned celib celibacy can happen naturally though it is via um, as already mentioned several times intention surrender prayer awareness non-judgment and it, it's gradual it takes time it's gradually it takes time oh and sexual fantasies uh, sexual daydreams and sexual thoughts also count as sex uh, even though they may be kind of hidden in the mind uh, they uh, energetically and spiritually they still count as sex is homosexuality a sin to pronounce something as a sin one needs to have a complete understanding of the whole thing this includes all the physical mental and spiritual contributors no person in the world has this kind of understanding thus no person has the authority to judge homosexuality the word sin as an acronym stands for spiritual incompatibility spiritual incompatibility sin for example um, an easy example drinking alcohol is a sin spiritually incompatible because alcohol is a very toxic energy that poisons you on many levels contributes to you being stuck in extreme cases it may even contribute to devolvement to going down spiritually and it also may cut you off from uh, divine love from the source of life so drinking alcohol is a sin with homosexuality we need to understand why the person's energy balance is the way it is if the soul chose to incarnate as a homosexual person or if God recommended it or guided it 
for some learning understanding purpose then it cannot be seen also at young age when one explores his or her sexuality homosexual play can be very important helpful in uh, exploring one's sexuality understanding one's sexuality and uh, even heterosexual relationship or heterosexual sex can be a sin when it is not loving respectful the funny thing is that the more people judge homosexuality the less evolved those people are and also dr david hawkins has calibrated the energy level of uh, homosexual marriage and it actually calibrates integrous which means harmonious positive life affirming something to be aware of as a closing comment as one evolves spiritually one starts leaving all this sexual hoopla behind as the uh, primal sex energy is converted uplifted to a high, higher and higher spiritual uh, energy at the same time the person can still uh, the individual can still have sex if uh, if one chooses it's, it's just that uh, he or she is not uh, attached to it is not attracted to it as a as an attachment as an as an aversion or an attachment either way so an evolved spiritual person can still enjoy sex if if needed or if wished it's just the one is not held by it and uh, one last mentioning is that if you want to understand better uh, the um, your aversions and attractions to sex or for the matter to anything else um, and the undercurrents of uh, things within you uh, then there is a natural health technique that helps deal with that it's called neuroemotional technique NET and it is performed by specially trained doctors uh, there is a website called netmindbody.com one word netmindbody.com and there is a practitioner finder link on the main page and uh, you can find a doctor close to you and even they are not that uh, common it depends where you are uh, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, very well worth it to even travel uh, long distances to such a doctor because it can shed great light on what's going on inside of uh, you and help resolve emotional neuroemotional issues and thus release the energy and help uplift it to high level. So that's it for this talk. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. Michael out.